लाइव हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग दिस इज वीनस अवतानी फ्रॉम सिविल डेली आई एस टुडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग द न्यूज़पेपर ऑफ थर्ड ऑफ जनवरी 2024 नाउ इन दिस देयर हैव बीन मल्टीपल इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूज ऑफ व्हिच विल डू द एनालिसिस फॉर एग्जांपल दिस प्रोटेस्ट ऑफ ट्रक ड्राइवर्स नाउ दिस बिकम्स क्रूशियल इन कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ द न्यू भारतीय न्याय संहिता एंड विल लुक एट द इंपॉर्टेंट रेलेवेंट प्रोविजंस हियर Apart from that, we'll also discuss about tsunami, as an earthquake came in Japan as a result of which tsunami happened, and then multiple events did occur. It is running from past few days, so we'll cover that. Apart from that, there has been an also article about governor, so we'll cover where to use such type of news, where it might not be that possible to you know have a comprehensive analysis, but. at least we'll try just to ensure that how do we utilize such points of multiple committees so hello everyone you can just tell me on your live chat whether i am live whether i am streaming fine so that we'll move on further with the analysis so yes you can just put on good morning hello and whatever you whatever you want to ask regarding today's articles like railways there has been this covered system which is in news and then another news article about zones has been asked here has been you know mentioned here in the newspapers that will cover and apart from that will also cover the maldives related news will cover the mapping portions also there and apart from that about the global nuclear order because an important article of rakesh sood has come over it and it is crucial to look into that so we'll we'll finally look into that so let's let's look at the first news which is about global nuclear order aspirant so here i would ask how many of you are aware about the cuban missile crisis good morning gopi how are you doing so how many of you are aware with the cuban missile crisis gopi can you answer what was cuban missile crisis of 1962 why why am i leading to this question is because from this will understand all the important initiatives between soviet union the then soviet union and the us and after that between russia and usa because this news about nuclear order has been developing from a lot of years since the problems have started again cropping up between us and russia and then both these countries have tried to do away with such agreements some arrangements regarding weapons control particularly nuclear strategic weapons so that is why we'll discuss this so yes anywhere aware with cuban missile crisis what was the year when did cuban missile crisis happen people what was the what was the you know important uh, event here in cuban missile crisis what was it related to now in this till the answers do come up i'll just explain that in this related to cuban missile crisis there have been some important events now upsc in upsc we don't focus on individual names here but today we'll be focusing on some crucial events like one or two stories as an act of courage to be mentioned in your ethics as well as essay papers that what exactly do we mean by courage and what exactly do we mean by courage and to have an individual act of courage where you are choosing not to do violence not to take action is also one sort of courage which can prevent the lives of millions which can save the future of the humanity also so this will discuss here so aspirants still no answers about cuban missile crisis anyone okay so let's let's discuss it i'll discuss it so what is there now in cuba us was trying to topple the government so instead cuba contacted ussr they dispatched some materials nuclear weapons sort of because ussr also wanted that in italy and turkey the countries of europe what should happen there should be deterrence so rather deploy some materials in cuba so that when us utilizes these these uh, territories then we are able to have deterrence here neighborhood to usa because cuba is just south of usa now in this what happened that there were some you know when the us came to know about it what will they do they will have interception of shipments around cuba that means 
no such ships could come over there will be a naval blockade but they did not call it a naval blockade but it didn't go well with the ussr so at that point of time this sort of action of naval blockade was considered as an act of war so now when both the countries have nuclear weapons in this context what happened some infighting shooting up of planes this happened after that a nuclear submarine by accident just by accident when it was in waters around cuba of ussr this submarine was of ussr at that point of time that witnessed a explosion by the usa so the people in the submarines the commanders they got a signal here that now there is some explosion this could be starting of a war they are underneath communications have broken down so they were thinking that let us launch a nuclear missile nuclear torpedo this is the right time to launch a nuclear torpedo and at that point of time it required permission from three commanders and two of the commanders the heads political and military both agreed but the commander who was second in line called vasily arkipo did not agree did not give assent to the launch of nuclear torpedo he mentioned that this might be an act of you see this might be a communication gap this might be a, just an accident that something exploded near the submarines but we will not launch the torpedo here and finally this torpedo was not launched and the world was saved just by the decision of one man the nuclear war around the world was saved so this is how uh, this is how the, you have to mention about the act of courage here this was a singular act of courage which saved the entire humanity such type of you know stories you need to get from the newspapers itself to be able to get prepared for mains without giving any extra effort even during at the time of pandemic this is how you can mention apart from that these incidents because during the same time there were some back channel talks going on between us and ussr now what are back channel talks talks happening at the back apart from the public gaze of either diplomats in this case the attorney general and soviet ambassador and through the back channel talks through diplomacy the finally the issue was resolved so the two world leaders at that point of time john f kennedy and the soviet premier nikita khrushchev are actually appreciated why because they chose to have diplomacy between them back channel talks rather than have a an aggravated sort of policy here which could have led to nuclear war now this was a landmark incident so these two type of examples you can mention why diplomacy is important why back channel talk talks are important why it is important to have talks for peace as an incident you can mention this now coming to the prelims related pointers you know because in this editorial if you see it properly there have been various mentions like anti ballistic missile treaty like there has been mention of intermediate range nuclear forces like there has been mention of ctbt so that is why we'll try to have an understanding as per whatever has been mentioned in your ncert books also so you saw there was cuban crisis then 1962 it was resolved 1962 to 72 we had peace uh, hello hello gorav singh i have appeared in three mains earlier 2018 19 and 20 so and also for one personality test for the exam cycle of 2020 so gorav answer me one thing what do you mean by salt acha 1962 after cuban missile crisis there will be peace so there will be salt strategic arms limitation treaty between the us and soviet union the then soviet union so as so, so just tell me gorav what do you mean by icbms in this regard in these initiatives there was talk of icbms intercontinental ballistic missiles so gorav can you answer what are intercontinental ballistic missiles or a simple question what are ballistic missiles themselves are we aware about this concept of ballistic missiles here anyone anyone who is aware of the concept of ballistic missiles why do we call them ballistic missiles you can just mention in the comment boxes so what i want to say here look there was this salt as part of it we had anti ballistic missile treaty that both the countries will agree 
that we will not further deploy ballistic missiles at the geographies where will we decide where will we choose that will not have ballistic missiles deployed here hai na so what are ballistic missiles basically ballistic missiles means that those missiles which are actually having trajectory of a natural projectile like projectile trajectory having a natural one like we fire it from here it goes upwards because of the gravity it again comes down naturally and there is no fuel used here it just goes in the trajectory of a natural object if you throw an object it would go like this this is the ballistic missile trajectory at that point of time ballistic missiles had had developments huge developments like ballistic missiles even crossing the continents that is why intercontinental ballistic missiles between multiple continents so this was happening and that is why we had agreements basically at that point of time now you compare this salt or development of salt to two here with your start so look soviet union broke russia came up so now we had start a new starting so from that you can remember drawing a table that look salt was the earlier one start is the new one having more comprehensive agreement here having around 80% of warheads were controlled here in your start treaty and start treaty was very good regarding verification and transparency it was in new some some years ago also when donald trump was the president why i tell this so what happened verification and transparency was very good that means both the countries could exchange information about their facilities where they have deployed warheads and they could control that and so on and so forth and in that what were the agreements look there are two types of weapons nuclear warheads here one is the strategic warhead but the other is the operational one just for the operations part not that strategic in nature not aiding or not leading to a nuclear war as such but still important for operational matters so for that we had sorted out you know the the agreement between the two countries regarding operational o for operational o for o of the sort so that is why we had sort as part of the start start to never came into agreement with which were regarding that we should have all the icbms into control like all the icbms we should not deploy them so this was drastic so this did not come true but at least sort had come up between them and after that what happened we had sort earlier now we have start as per start we have sort but then we also need some newer arrangements so we had barack obama coming up as president and at that point of time further efforts for peace so we had new start remember icbms were not part of it so finally they were made a part of new start treaty of 2009 where most of the warheads as well as icbms were made under the ambit apart from the submarine launched icbms remember during cuban crisis there was this use of nuclear submarine we had just discussed that there was torpedo so submarines have been in use here so from here submarine launched ballistic missiles could also be controlled under new start treaty of 2009 now what's the news here what has been happening now what is happening is that this new trial start treaty this was extended in 2021 for 2026 but what the author is saying here what rakesh sood is saying that look there are no such provisions after 2026 that what will happen to these treaties likewise donald trump had himself had usa removed he take took usa out of anti ballistic missile treaty of 2000 from in 2019 stating that look soviet union is not following russia is not following we will also not follow likewise there there is this inf treaty also which has come into problem this is about medium range nuclear forces medium range nuclear weapons and this has also been now taken out and after that what has happened is that russia stating that us is not agreeing to test ban on banning the test of nuclear weapons so that is why we will also now come out of ctbt 
which was related to banning the tests of nuclear weapons comprehensively around the world although india is not a part of it i'll explain it some uh, you know i'll explain it in future with here there is paucity of time that why india is not a part of ctbt because they had a different you know different perspective here i have also made a short video on that you could also look at it but basically what we need to discuss here that so many arrangements are now faltering out why we need to understand here as per rakesh sood's opinion here that look the global order earlier was made by two countries basically they were made by agreement among two countries usa and ussr are we able to understand students whatever i am telling here if yes you can also comment in the comment boxes are you able to understand me uh, are you able to get everything i am telling you can just say yes or you can just say simple or simplify if you want further simplified explanation or any other feedback so ussr and usa ussr and usa had the global nuclear order earlier right since the 1962 cuban missile crisis hai na so after that what happened we had nuclear non proliferation treaty what was the year when this treaty was implemented what was the year aspirants uh, gopi can you write it here what was the year of implementation of non nuclear nuclear non proliferation treaty and who are the five members who have been allowed to have nuclear proliferation and which others have not been allowed hello bupen so yes so after that Uh, Bupin, we have also studied about START here. So, can you tell about START? What was the year of implementation of START as per the discussions we have just seen now? What was the year of implementation? So, look, there was NPT, then START, then you see we had SALT also. Before that, we had SALT here. So, multiple such nuclear order, you know, global nuclear order mechanisms for global nuclear order, basically. but after that what has happened soviet union broke up russia came up now china is another member us power is declining so the world has moved from just two powers the bipolar world order towards the multipolar world order and if the world will move towards the multipolar world order 1968 yes nuclear non proliferation treaty was there in 1968 now about the five members who have been allowed nuclear proliferation gopi can you answer it so uh, then i'll also further tell about it so multipolar world order is there that means agreements are more difficult to come up among multiple powers and apart from that what has happened that there have been these powers here usa russia china th there is difficulty they are coming out of the agreements as we have seen it just now INF has been done away with. Start is now just will expire in twenty twenty six. CTBT Russia has come out of it. Russia has also conducted nuclear tests here. Russia Ukraine war further has put concerns here because they, because because Putin had threatened to have nuclear attacks here. So this is what the author is saying that there is this global nuclear order crisis which has happened, but. we should also consider a positive picture here what is the you know what, what is the silver lining here that there 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 have been such agreements now which have been withdrawn but as it has been often observed even during the cuban missile crisis that even during the times of conflict even during the times of frictions even at that point of time somehow by back channel diplomacy and by the logic of the nuclear weapons themselves that the use of nuclear weapons will be so devastating both the powers will be attacking upon each other will have destruction mutually assured destruction and that is why by the logic of it themselves somehow in history we have seen that there has been no nuclear war as such and countries have been there with into agreement so moreover the problem is not with regard to the states the problem is not with regard to the conventional nation states like usa or russia but the problem is more with regard to non state actors 
For example, what would happen if nukes fall into the hands of Taliban or Al Qaeda? Then what will happen to the world? How will those nukes be used? This is what we need to deliberate upon, and for this we need to have solutions. That is what we can further conclude regarding nuclear weapons. If if you mention it in GS paper three or in your essay papers. So this was the discussion. China, France, USA, UK, Russia. Yes, nice copy. So permanent members basically. So India till now had not till that point of time had not developed nuclear weapons. So India was not allowed proliferation. But then afterwards, nineteen seventy four, India had conducted nuclear tests, peaceful nuclear explosions, which we called as peaceful nuclear explosions, cleverly by Indira Gandhi. So when we conducted it. after that some countries came together in london primarily the g7 countries so they came together along with ussr in london forming a london club discussing that india had somehow acquired nuclear technology nuclear material despite a nuclear non proliferation treaty in place india was not a member of npt not a member of npt till now but india acquired it that means we need to somehow control export of such nuclear materials either in civilian uses energy purposes or for military purposes and that is why after that we had coming up of nuclear suppliers group and remember ussr a point to be noted ussr was also part of this london club even though we had treaty of peace friendship and agreement during bangladesh war with ussr despite that despite that ussr was part of the london club that means for ussr non proliferation was a priority it was their choice but just as a matter of fact i told this so this this was the importance and this was the basically discussion here coming to the next news about maldives now many of you might be following the news about maldives here people that there is this india out campaign which happened that you push india out of the maldives their presence either helicopters or, or our aircrafts from there or our security forces for maintenance of the aircrafts from there now what what abhijit singh is mentioning is about the impact it will put on maldives itself why because look this is this is this is motivated now here he is also telling about hydrography what is hydrography and how it is in news because maldives has now said that will now not have hydrographic surveys with india which were there so here will analyze whatever has been important for the exam but before that before coming to the content of the article people tell me whether equator passes from maldives as a country do you know do you have heard about any of the atolls here or rather let's forget about the names of the atolls just tell me what is the meaning of atolls here entire maldives if you see is made up of such islands called atolls now i just want a simple answer in the comment boxes you can you know just type in what is the meaning of these atolls just try to enlighten me also people what is the meaning of atolls till that point of time let us see this news that there is this uh, president moisu just abolished that there will be no hydrographic surveys between india and maldives hydrography means there is supposed some coast trying to understand the topography of the coast around the coast is there any mountain here in the sea is there any such feature here and all of that how does it help in it helps in navigation it helps in safety of the vessels it helps in scientific research it also can help in environmental monitoring what is the status of coral reefs and so on and so forth are we able to understand it people are you able to understand it so just tell yes in the comment boxes so this is there now it's not that india alone is having such research vehicles there are research vessels by china also so there is this research vessel by china called xian class of survey vessels or yuan wang series of intelligence surveillance reconnaissance ships now this yuan wang series 
was in news with another south asian country also these yuan wang series of vessels can you tell the name of it that the vessels the chinese vessels of reconnaissance matlab intelligence capturing intelligence with which country this was in news can you give it in the comment boxes which country of south asia was in news with regard to that bhupendra can you answer it uh, or goro can you answer it so this is there that this is how you know the, this is related activities of china in indian ocean around sri lanka also around maldives also and then there is this chinese surveys which have happened here now what 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 abhijit singh wants to say here is that look there are these survey for research for intelligence but these also feed into military knowledge traditionally so there is no such basis of accusation of the maldives president he says that if we do hydrographic survey with india what will happen is that there will be problems because india will use it for military purposes what what here abhijit singh says that look it already is used for military purposes by multiple powers the idea is that for that you don't stop the access of other countries in the indian ocean sri lanka gopi yes you are right so this 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 yuan wang series of vessels was in news with respect to sri lanka because chinese were deploying chinese tried to deploy these vessels into sri lankan waters and then india took a problem from it india had some issues here they issues to some statements that this should not be done because this is a reconnaissance based satellite uh, survey vessel and anyways this is very close to the indian coast so this will come under india's exclusive economic zones and then there it could be snooping even if you see the international law as has been mentioned in the editorial here the unclause as per that also there is no such ban on vessels beyond the exclusive economic zone of a country now let's suppose this is maldives this this is maldives now beyond the exclusive economic zone there is no such prohibition on use of surveillance or any type of such vessels so legally again there is a justification that look this is right there is nothing wrong which india is doing here you know so there is no such basis and apart from that what what he wants to say is that rather than you know having a unilateral action and prohibiting india maldives should balance its interest with vis-a-vis -vis china as well as india there is china which has been the aggressor in recent times in the oceans even in the south china sea with its salami tactics strategy salami tactics anyone aware of the salami tactics strategy here anyone can just tell the answer to it or not even then that is fine salami tactics just try to research about it like you know or i'll explain it in the samachar within classes also at the end of the week so that will do so shubham are you able to understand how did we want to develop this editorial uh, you know what what they want to say now what the author wants to say is that the maldives should enhance maritime awareness and should further ensure that china is not seeking to weaponize these oceanic surveys because india has been a traditional partner of maldives here it has been into help of maldives also in the earlier times also like there was this in 2014 there was problem of bottling plants you know water filtration in maldives at that time point point of time also india had conducted operation neer and provided bottled drinking water we were the first to supply such bottled drinking water likewise in the maldives coup of 1980s we had sent military here to preserve the law and order into maldives and to ensure that the coup by tamil militants ltt militants from neighboring sri lanka do not have influence on the maldives so we have been help you know we have been very helping towards maldives and maldives should recognize it this is the idea here so that's there now regarding mapping portion so i had asked in the starting whether equator passes through maldives so here can you see a small line equator line here which is there this this crosses maldives there are two islands here as you can see which are beyond the equator 
why we are discussing it because upsc has been again turning to traditional type of questions now little bit in prelims so this can be asked in mapping so there is this addu at all where there was suspected uh, where there was this projects plan for projects by india also on addu and lamu at all these are different different at all how do they develop how do at all develop i had asked this also in the comment boxes uh, they, they they still they uh, no one answered here so try to be in what happens here there are these mountains here there are these submarines and after that what's there you see what happens here so so there is this development of atolls there is this development of support here around this and then the recedes into the water so we have development of atolls here so then this is how the atolls develop here uh, shubham what do you try, want to understand here if you can just tell me uh are there any if, if there are any doubts here you can ask me or if there is any issue in understanding you can tell me further so i'll help it there so look there are these atolls of this type of kind here now these atolls these are made up like you, you see entire islands are made up of such atolls and then there are these channels in between like on one and a half degree there is this channel one and a half degree channel so in this people have you heard of 8 degree channel or 10 degree channel with regard to india marine ecosystems and corals yes ojasvi so this is primarily corals do develop around the mountains here around the submarine mountains and goyots you might have heard it in your geography portions about goyots so yes so so this is how marine ecosystem develops here uh, so so this is there now after this there is an entire development of island on the atolls so we have the islands here so now this is there there are different different channels kadiva channel is there one and a half degree channel is here there is this capital male on which there is male atoll although surprisingly on male the capital there has been no airport traditionally so what happens there is this airport on an island just near to male island and then what happens there, there was development of a bridge by china here so this was china maldives friendship bridge because of which they, the 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 maldives were able to connect themselves with the airport directly the capital with the airport so this is how this is an example that india should have been more quicker in development of the infrastructure of maldives you know connecting different different atolls here because still there is no single road here which can you can you know sustainable road which can connect all these atolls together so this is how we could have you know been forward in terms of maldives so this is there so so this was the news about maldives this this infographic is what i had told in my samachar mathan classes also this is slightly about the evolution here evolution of relationship and primarily evolution of politics in maldives because of the lack of time and i understand that you people have to prepare so today i'm skipping it but you can arrange the pdf of it and you can also i'll i'll give the pdf on cdis telegram channel civil daily is uh, and uh, after the after after the video i'll comment also the link and then after that you can you on that channel itself you can get the pdf and read it slightly so that you will be able to understand it further so rising chinese footprint yes so just see there is rising chinese footprint in the indian ocean and that has been now clearly visible in maldives as a country which have led india out campaign so that is there now in this the next news article is about manrega now there what has happened the government has said that they will seed the aadhar with the job cards of manrega beneficiaries we'll see all of that the aadhar based payment system also and also about the job cards but before that we should understand about employment generally hai na so i would just ask a question what was the need for having employment based schemes in india we have manrega right since early 2000s 2005 6 so why why there is a need for having such employment based schemes in india 
है ना बिकॉज बिकॉज देर शुड बी सम नीड हेयर सो प्रॉब्लम इज विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू इकोनॉमिक क्राइसिस वी हैड लो इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ इन इंडिया लो जॉब्स इन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर लिटिल बिट जॉब्स इन सर्विसेज सेक्टर विच डज नॉट एब्सॉर्ब दैट मच ऑफ लेबर दैट यूल ऑल रीड इन इकोनॉमिक्स वाई दिस हैपन्स दिस मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर एब्सॉर्ब लॉट ऑफ जॉब्स बट सर्विसेज सेक्टर डजेंट सो वॉट हैपन देर हैव बीन मोर पीपल लेस नंबर ऑफ जॉब क्रिएशन so in that context what will happen the people who are the most vulnerable who are not having any skills of any such you know specialized nature like it skills software skills finance skills so on and so forth so so they'll feel vulnerable primarily these unskilled labor from rural areas will be vulnerable and because of which the rural development as gopi had also mentioned will suffer here so the rural development of villages here you know that will suffer here because of the vulnerability of the unskilled rural labor so what is the solution then provide some form of employment or work to the unskilled rural labor here how we provide some form of un, uh, you know employment look there are multiple works of public like government has multiple responsibilities to create public facilities here like ponds in villages irrigation facilities or multiple site types of such facilities buildings etc now what you do you just provide something in return to the rural labor which is unskilled manual labor to do this type of work but give something in return to them and this will be a form of employment even if these people have do not have any sort of such you know security or employment job security at least they'll be able to have something some work of some nature at least they'll be able to engage themselves leading to less distress and this was the idea it's not the first time since the early 2000s there was a food for work program earlier during earlier plans fifth five year plan sixth five year plan food for work that means if you work there will be food but now in manrega through ministry of rural development through implementation by ministry of rural development what is there every household in rural areas will be having 100 days of guaranteed employment into unskilled manual labor unskilled manual work every such household from rural areas what is there there has to be guarantee that means if there is a register here about manrega in the village if a person comes up and asks for work and he asks for unskilled manual labor the government has to provide work here if the government does not provide work there will have to be unemployment allowances within 15 days this is what the crux of the act is you know so uh, ujeshi are you able to understand now what we are discussing so any doubts here you can further ask so basically this is based on the criteria of self selection matlab whoever will come will get the work so this is self selection this is not basically selection based on some criteria caste gender etc whoever will come they are able to self select themselves so this is self selection there are multiple benefits here it is also mentioned in your india since independence bipin chandra book that self selection helps in your better inclusivity and better targeting because this is unskilled manual work for 100 days minimum any person from prosperous section will not to do such work so only vulnerable people will come over for such work and because if they even have little bit awareness about this program which is there in rural areas they are definitely bound to come that means they are self selecting themselves government does not has to provide any criteria to exclude anyone government will not exclude anyone rather people will come by their own will and they'll get the work and there is better targeting and inclusive development in this way so this is the idea of self selection now in this regarding wages which has been in news so uh, i would just ask one thing here uh, any such you know uh, so so are you able to understand people what, whatever i have been telling gopi shubham ujasvi are you able to understand what we are telling gaurav so uh, 
you know any other questions further so by the way how many digits are there in the aadhar number just a simple question not not i mean anyone might be knowing it but still we can answer it so so our idea is that the, the earlier what used to happen regarding wages look this person went here so there is some some, some register there is a role at the local level master role on which details are mentioned who which people with which job card they had how work for how many days then this is passed to the state government then the state government gives it to the central government then the funds are released from the central government side and then this goes to the people earlier it was manual now what did we decide in manual there are chances of corruption the local level beneficiary can take advantage of it you know so that is the problem here now so that the government thought that let us have not have job cards and this manual thing but let us seed everything with aadhar why because we came up with this aadhar based beneficiary payment system in 2017 what used to happen here look your bank account will be linked to aadhar number now aadhar number is universal in india 12 digit number so this will be linked to your bank account so your bank account will not be given to the government only your aadhar card will be used and by using your aadhar card itself whichever account is linked to your aadhar card in that the funds will automatically reach after clearances by the central government this is the idea here and there is a dedicated portal filled for for it called aadhar enabled payment system people this is there so now this will happen and then what, what's there what's next so here now the government has said that they'll integrate this functioning this functioning was for those which was optional till now but now what the government is saying look there can be forgery of aadhar cards there can be duplication even if not then you know people suppose there is someone who is living outside the village into the city they can just give aadhar card that i have worked some compliance with the local people some complicity with the local level officials and then the amount can reach to the account of this person around half of the amount will reach to this account and then some cuts will be taken by local level officials and this will lead to overall corruption and this was observed in jharkhand sometimes back some one or two years back and that is why since then time period the government was thinking let us do something for it what we have to do here we have to link the job cards which are present with the aadhar cards no so whichever job cards which will now not now be as because aadhar there is difficulty in duplication of aadhar job cards there might be multiple this is based on which people might be taking advantage so now this will be linked so finally what will happen all the duplicate job cards will be deleted but there is a concern here that if we try to delete these duplicate job cards there will be further problem because some in some cases there might be some genuine cases where aadhar you know there, there might be issues in aadhar of someone in some authentication or there might be some address mismatch or any type of such mismatch this can happen and this is also because after that what will happen all job cards will be linked to aadhar that means you can easily have universal system all payments as per aadhar of that person into bank account but now there is also concern of cyber security so many aadhar details have been going out like have been leaked and sold into the dark web there is also problem here vis-a-vis the bank accounts itself not everyone might be having a bank account even till now although because of pradhan mantri jan aadhar yojana there has been multiple bank accounts of women also but still there might be some glitches here technological glitches which might exclude the most vulnerable here and this is the concern which is being discussed and because of which this matter is again and again coming up in your news regarding aadhar enabled payment system aadhar based payment system so this was the news about the aadhar based payment system people any doubts you want to ask further here any issues people you want to ask so before that i would just ask about railway zones uh, students as because this news has come up in the hindu 
regarding the south coast railway zone uh, because you know this this was promised something promised by government of india to andhra people so in this regard are you aware about railway zones people how many railway zones do we have in india who oversees the railway zones have you heard about a post called divisional railway manager drms any of you people so look this is the map here of railway zones in india are you able to look at it this is taken from wikipedia a simplified it was readily available simplified map look there are multiple zones here first second third zone fourth zone fifth zone initially during independence there were a few number of zones later on we have diversified the number here increase the number and look this is the detail of all the zones like the first zone is northern railway zone having these many areas divisions under it so these are the divisions into each zone so lucknow or firozpur delhi this is the division here so now what why i am showing is that because we have we need to understand it because of the article here so look this is the geography of this region we have here zone 15 and zone number 6 here if we look at zone number 6 where is zone number 6 so look this is south central railway and if we look at 15 this is east coastal railway around bhubneswar like having areas of vizag khurda and sambalpur basically related to odisha and andhra pradesh why am i showing it to you 17 zones yes around uh, 16 17 are the zones so you are correct uh, so yes so look this is 15 number east coast railway zone now here we have vishakha patnam what the people wanted is that so what has happened here we need to understand the overall politics of andhra here so andhra what happens so in andhra pradesh what happens is that there is there are two areas so one is the real sima region one is the coastal andhra basically the northern parts they are generally considered to be little bit more developed so what happens the vishakha patnam people they feel that they have been marginalized like all the trains if you see the article also the trains have been there from bangalore and these areas to far away areas like bhubneswar puri sambalpur and so on and so forth but these trains have not been ending into vishakha patnam as a city these trains are not finishing in vishakha patnam and in some cases they have connectivity from here to here but these do not have connectivity in this why because of the formation of eastern coast look there is only eastern coast railway zone in india east coast railway zone but there is no such presence of another zone here which is called as south coast railway zone this will come near to just south of the eastern coast railway zone and the south coast railway zone will finally help vishakhapatnam also develop this was the idea this was also promised by the indian government before the elections 2019 general elections but then there has been no move on that why i'll tell it because here yeah. there is land look you there is availability of railway land here there is availability of spare offices around vishakhapatnam steel plant which are not being used in vishakhapatnam what the gov- but the government says indian government says that look we don't want to have offices here we want to develop a world class sort of railway zone so that is why we'll develop it around muda sarlova muda sarlova reservoir here this is present just near to it so this is there current affairs daily nahi aata hai प्रोजेक्ट्स इंडिया infrastructure projects primarily this is also one of the infrastructure projects you need uh, land for offices and so on and there are so many land disputes in india which gets stuck here so again there are also here also there is land acquisition issues with respect to land near mudasarlova reservoir 
but what is being alleged is that this is just an excuse you could also have the you know office developed here uh, in the zonal headquarters of south coast railway developed here around vishakhapatnam steel plant in vishakhapatnam but why you are not developing it because this will lead to credit going to the local andhra government which the central government doesn't want so this is also one of the allegations here by the critic by the critics particularly the local andhra people that because of politics this issue is being running on how do you utilize this in your exam simple utilize it in land acquisition that we want to develop headquarters of the zonal railways we want to develop new zonal railway south coastal zonal railways but that is being stuck because of the land acquisition issues near mudasarlova reservoir and we are not able to find sufficient land here. so this is one of the topics to mention one of the points to mention in your gs paper 3 land reforms topic particularly and also in infrastructure if you get the opportunity to write an infrastructure related answer also so that was it uh, so are we able to understand people or we should we should should we move forward to the next article okay so next article is about the governor the role of governor that there is this you know problems with regard to the role of governor in india why because the governor originally was considered as an office which would be neutral which would be impartial in nature but what has happened this has not been neutral not impartial rather it has turned out to be an agent of the center why because the appointment of the office of governor happens at the pleasure of the president people you might have heard of the pleasure doctrine doctrine of pleasure here anyone aware of the doctrine of pleasure i want answers in your comments land use policy yes this is the, the earlier article was related to land use policy which is very good so pleasure of doctrine of pleasure what is doctrine of pleasure tell me till then what i'll tell look 1960s 70s problems had started coming up so that is why even sarkaria committee have had said that what we had expected out of the governors the quality of impartiality that they will be they will be having impartial nature they will have they are respected they are dg or authority of that state even though they are appointed by the president they would have visions of state government and opinion of state government in, also in mind that has not happened they have not been impartial they have not been able to maintain the sagacity of the office and that is why even sarkaria commission had recommended that we should we should ensure some reforms here we should ensure that government even the governor is a detached figure here and further there there should be some provisions for the safeguards regarding the office of governor like ensuring consultation with the chief minister here as has been mentioned in the article itself amending the article 155 having consultation with the chief minister as per sarkaria commission report before appointing the governor itself this is a way forward for you that sarkaria commission recommendation had mentioned it so you, you can mention it in an answer related to governor in your papers further there was also criticism by punchi commission also so what was the criticism of punchi commission that these governors are provided the statutory power of being vice chancellors of universities now this somehow politicizes their office because they are governor neutral head expected to be neutral but then they are also vice chancellors of universities and in these universities when they go when they give speeches there are multiple debates happening among students and often these become centers of anti state government activities there in these centers and all of that leads to multiple issues here so this is how this is being said that this type of provision should be removed and afterwards in present times as has been mentioned in article even the kerala government was in favor of it but then vice chancellor removed to be you know removed out of the vice you know a vice chancellorship of university and finally what has happened here he went to that university and here he gave a controversial speech so what is the solution people can we have a sense of morality among the governors 
can we implement constitutional morality here this is related to your article which has come up can we implement constitutional morality here what is the meaning of constitutional morality or people are you aware about any judgment which had described constitutional morality acha upsc mein kabhi pucha hai ye constitutional morality has been has there been any essay topic about constitutional morality in upsc so the author is the the, the article you know it is connecting constitutional morality to actually is this right up to the office of governor how that look there have been earlier judgments also in government of nct versus union of india at the time of chief justice deepak mishra former chief justice deepak mishra there was mention that we should emphasize on moral values of the constitution based on the notion of a constitutional culture that means a culture which should respect the constitutional values and constitutional morals of the constitution constitutional morals and values so that the individuals occupying such positions of authority they are able to function as per this constitutional culture not violating the spirit of the constitution not violating the constitutional morality why because even the immunity is available to the governor there are multiple immunities available to the governor as per article 361 which even go against article 14 equality before law not everyone is equal the holders of such constitutional positions have to be provided certain immunities and privileges people otherwise how they will function so they have certain immunities as per article 361 but in that also the courts have mentioned in rameshwar prasad versus union of india acha tell me rameshwar prasad does it sound similar to the name of the first president of india rajendra prasad uh, who was belonging from bihar as you might have known so this is also one case of bihar this is how you can remember the context that bihar uh, there was this case uh, regarding presidential rule so in that the, the the supreme court had said that governor the conduct of governor is actually amenable to judicial review here and we should you, you know there there should be no immunity for extra constitutional gestures of the governor going outside the limit of the governors the purview of the governors and likewise there has been a recent case here in koshal kishore versus state of uttar pradesh which had mentioned that we should we, we can easily have the conduct of the governor questioned by utilizing article 19 clause 2 by utilizing the exceptions with respect to freedom of speech and ex- expression by utilizing that like anyone cannot state any statements against the sovereignty of india friendly relations with other friendly relation with of india with other countries against defense of india and so on and so forth that provision should be taken care of and if the governor or any such authority has statements against these provisions then as per exceptions as per article 19 clause 2 they can be implicated so this was the basically the crux of the article here regarding governor and constitutional morality a lot of stuff to remember here sarkaria puchi commission recommendations the rameshwar prasad judgment the koshal kumar versus state of up you all remember it i'll ask it you know i'll ask it tomorrow also so hello hello so so i'll ask it tomorrow you just remember all these four things these are good value addition points in polity committee recommendations and judgments are good points for value addition so you should always remember them are you able to understand it acha how many of you have heard about balochistan there's a small news in text and context page number 8 of hindu the gist about some happenings inside balochistan and islamabad not directly related to syllabus that is why i'll explain how do you utilize such news as one pointer in your paper but before that i want answers what is the balochistan issue or where is balochistan located what is the issue of baluchistan vis-a-vis pakistan any such comments and till the comments come up because this is an ancillary news i'll move to the next news what is the next news here people this is about slum this again has come into text and context page number 9 what is the news here there was some research by private researcher you don't need to remember that about slums 
that how the perception of slums has changed. Now, this is directly related to your syllabus, people. GS1, issues related to poverty and urbanization. The slums part, that. And the overall protection, mechanisms for protection of vulnerable sections. Because people living in slums, the urban poor, are also among the vulnerable sections. So, this is related to your social justice and society portions of GS1 and GS2. How you have to overall approach it? Look, you just have to mention here that during a research of discussions happened in Rajya Sabha from 1953 to 2014, it was realized that these, you know, the, it was realized that the approach towards slums in India has changed. Why? Initial years, independence, partition, refugees coming into India on multiple properties they settled in Delhi also. So these slums were considered as areas of epidemics, something which should be removed. Later on, what happened during 60s and 70s, it was realized that we should have at least some provisions for them. They are, you know, there are some funding limitations and these are necessary evils they are developing because of some reasons. This happened, but still the policy has not changed completely. After that, we realized that these people living in urban slums, look, who are these urban slums? Are you aware? What is the relationship of migration with urban slums? Achha, people migrate from rural areas to live where in urban areas. Just tell me this in the answers. So, so, so I'll develop it further. Look, so they realized, government realized that there are these urban slums here. You know, people migrate from rural areas, distress, they'll go to urban areas, they don't have any land or property to settle, unstable incomes, so they'll go into slums, now they'll settle here. So if you want to, you know, remove these slums, you should have alternate housing projects. And this is a fact you need to remember, which is mentioned in the editorial, that there is this national slum development program as a part of housing policies of India in 1996. This was launched. And now are you able to understand why this developed in 1990s, not in 1950s? Because the policy priority keeps on changing of the government. So this developed and then there was this focus on infrastructure. Finally, it was realized through census also that we need comprehensive data on slums. There are these slums because of multiple factors of push and pull migration. People, are you aware about push and pull factors of migration? What pushes people out of villages to go into urban areas? What are the push factors as per your NCRTs? What actually pulls people into the urban areas? If you can just mention it. So there are these multiple factors of migration. And that is why we need to look at multiple factors. This has how the policy has changed. You just have to mention one line regarding urban slums, regarding the urbanization related issues, that there was need for policy change here in the policy perspective of the government, which has happened vis-a-vis -vis comparing to 1950s, 60s in the present times. So this is there. Coming to the next news, people. So are we able to understand? You can write yes in the comment boxes. Shubham, Ojasvi. Uh, uh, other people also, Gopi, are you able to get it? What we are trying to say here, what we are trying to mention here. So this is there. Now, after it, what is the idea here in this editorial? Simple idea is there in regarding sports in this editorial that look, multiple winners have come out of rural areas in the latest tournament. There are these poverty stricken people. Why medals are not coming from urban areas? Because people are living a comfortable lifestyle sedentary lifestyle basically less amount of physical activity but india has realized the importance of investing in sports and not just elite people playing tennis or squash we should also promote the culture of sports and as per that the the overall funding here has also improved as has been mentioned in this article that the budget has also improved and we have ambitious projects we are trying to develop Ahmedabad also as a venue for Olympics in 2036. And then state level also new infrastructure is developing. So we should try to promote the career of sports 
among rural background people less economically weaker sections and as well as the middle class people by developing a culture of sports by the way what is the benefit of culture of sports people if anyone can answer how do you benefit from the culture of sports what does sports promote how did sports used to help you in your uh, in your in your daily life or how does any type of physical activity help in your daily life people if any of you can mention till then let us think this article there is this explained article about america's climate failures look you don't have to analyze all this jargon all this data for any question related to climate change if it is focusing on funding that what steps india should take or what are the challenges with respect to climate change if any essay you have to write regarding environment regarding challenges to tackle climate change what are the challenges in taking steps then just you can take just this much this snippet that look us has not was not willing to ratify kyoto protocol it did not ratify reluctantly it took steps and ratified paris but during the time of donald trump again during time of donald trump they withdrew out of paris agreement and then they again joined so this shows the reluctance of developed countries the country which has been responsible for most of the emissions around 20% of the carbon dioxide emissions since 1850 have been done by usa still it has been the most reluctant here and this is what we can consider here regarding the slow steps taken by us and other developed countries and here we need to understand one more thing look there are multiple steps with respect to climate change one is that you try to reduce the emissions here from factories you see this is smoke here coming out of a factory or from vehicles here from cars carbon dioxide emissions basically this is mitigation but one is adaptation that multiple people we heard about maldives we listened about maldives today maldives is also one of the small and de de small island developing countries one of the victims of ocean floor rising here ocean levels rising here carbon dioxide will rise temperature will rise glaciers will melt sea level rise these countries will submerge go under the sea so they need adaptation already lot of climate emissions has taken lot of temperature rise has taken 2023 was the historical year of most of the you know the, the most warmest year till now as per multiple reports also so what we want to say as per the report also adaptation gap report that there has been less focus on adaptation in glasgow conference of parties in glasgow the countries agree to double the overall flows funding flows on adaptation but this this not happened in fact this has witnessed in year on year decline and that is why we should also focus on adaptation and we should push countries like usa to focus on adaptations india zero carbon emissions target by 2070 yes arushi we can mention this as a sort of defense of india that there was pressure to become net zero in india and india has shown how do we become net zero we have finally ha had the uh, you know strategy that will become net zero by 2070 despite the fact that we have still to develop substantially this is the idea now this is a news article about a designated terrorist that a person who was involved in some killing of khalistanis he has been designated as a terrorist in this regard we should look at unlawful activities prevention act look as the name suggest unlawful activities prevention act this is about prevention of activities which are unlawful in india against the sovereignty of india against the defense and security of india this is the objective here but now there were some changes in recent times why because there were some loopholes we need to understand the loopholes here to be able to mention it in your answers look what were the loopholes anyone can tell what is the difference between designated and organization a terrorist and designating an individual as a terrorist suppose i say jaish e mas mas you know masood azhar is a terrorist individual and i say jaish e mohammed is a is a terrorist as an organization terrorist organization what is the difference here if i say jaish e mohammed is in a terrorist organization if i designated as per terrorist organization under the uapa law because there is a section here to designate 
the fourth schedule to designate someone as a terrorist earlier what was there we can designate someone as an organization as a terrorist what will happen here the individuals who are functioning in this organization they will simply move to form another organization to form a if you now designate a as terrorist they'll form b as terrorist the problem is not just with the organization the problem is also with the individuals particularly the key individual functioning from pakistan or in some cases even from india this is the problem so the home minister during introduction of this amendment to uaps stated that to curb this problem what will have now will designate individuals as terrorists themselves we will not leave this hope live for we will designate individuals under this schedule by amending this schedule if anyone is terror accused now what could this individual do suppose this individual knows that he is not a terrorist they can apply to the government that look i am not a terrorist if the government rejects it no we have sufficient evidence you are a terrorist then the final mechanism is review of that decision and there are members of judiciary here one retired judge of court here high court here retired or sitting judge then other three persons now look what is the problem here what is what is the issue with this what how can this be misutilized people how can this be misused if any one of you can say judge three other persons mostly decided by government what will be the misuse of this this amendment people if any of you can mention how it will be misused so 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 this is this is there that this was the 2019 overall amendment with regard to uapa and designating someone as a terrorist what is a terrorist activity the terror or terrorism you know it is not generally defined but we consider anything against any act against unity integrity security or sovereignty of india as a terrorist activity so what are these implications here look if 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 this is the case that there are three other persons nominated by the government and judge there is ambiguity here by influencing these people we there can be wrongful conviction here of someone as a terrorist wrongful labeling if there is some mislabeling like suppose in 100 cases this is a correct labeling but in one cases if there is some error here then that person who is innocent will be labeled as a terrorist their actions be will be taken against them by the government they will lose all the respect all the support in the society so they'll have grave implications and then they can't prove it because they are proven terrorist guilty unless they are proven unless they are able to prove themselves as right this goes against the natural principles of justice which says that you are innocent until you are proven as guilty here what is happening you are considered you are assumed to be guilty you are assumed to be a terrorist rather until you prove yourself as innocent and this as this is the burden of proof as we say lies on the accused and this creates a problem further this is the problem here this is the issue which is being discussed what could be the way forward which you could mention in exam in answers simple you just say that there should be a balanced mechanism which should be required to further deal up with these issues like to further create safeguards mechanisms maybe creating an independent commission for inquiry that whether any innocent is never termed as a liberal, you know labeled as a terrorist as a further final mechanism of appeal also so this is there now coming to the next news people arushi were you able to understand now i'll just ask uh, arushi or rana just answer me what is the protest of truckers in recent times which has been happening why the truckers are protesting in recent times in india what is the context of protest here let's discuss it so what has happened there is a section called section 106 as has been mentioned in the article also of bhartiya nyay sanhita now bhartiya nyay sanhita is a comprehensive act here which has, which is which will replace indian evidence act indian police act and even the criminal procedure code crpc this will replace all of these as a comprehensive measure to ensure that the colonial laws are done away with and we have modernized laws 
so what was happening what we have discussed what we have seen in recent times is that there were multiple incidents of road accidents here by trucks here trucks are often overloaded there are violations and so on and so forth so when then used to happen there used to be casualties on road the truck drivers used to run away what were the penalties earlier in ipc section there were penalty of 2 years with no fine here but now in new bharatiya sanhita due to increase jail time in hit and run yes very good arushi very nice answer so very crux so what is there now the punishment has been increased to 10 years if you hit someone as a trucker and if you run then there will be 10 years of fine punishment and a fine also of 7 lakh rupees so this has somehow angered the indian motor all india motor transport congress a body of these motor transport vehicles these people why because they say that look to run out of such a such an incident becomes a necessity for a trucker otherwise they can be victims of mob violence here the mob can kill them and sometimes the mistake is not there they it is because of the faulty design and so on and so forth this is the entire issue but now i'll ask one thing about article 90 this this is about right to protest opposition is also involved here this is about right to protest this is the broader theme here now tell me about right to protest is right to protest a fundamental right under which fundamental right can you put right to protest anyone anyone can answer here right to protest what is the what is the fundamental right under which you can put it till then i'll explain all the exceptions given up in article 19 clause 2 article 19 freedom of speech and expression to the exceptions of which there are exceptions that you can't violate freedom of speech and expression on the grounds you can't have freedom of speech and expression if you are violating sovereignty of india security friendly relations with other countries public order affecting decency or you are having defamation you are conducting defamation and so on and so forth right to speech yes arushi i would say that in right to freedom of speech and expression article 19 there are clauses right to assemble peacefully without arms so primarily under that this right to protest will come up now my further question is is it the same as right to strike is this right absolute the right to protest is it absolute just tell me yes or no in the comment boxes are we having an absolute right to protest and how is it different than right to strike right to protest we saw that it is fundamental right but is right to strike also a fundamental right can we also can we put it put this also in under article 90 if you can tell it students do tell in the comment boxes now yes without doubt yes sir so that, that's the now right to protest there have been multiple mentions by the court which explain why we are discussing it because look these truckers are protesting this is somehow blocking the supply of essential commodities like we have milk like we have other such commodities which are there so this is blocking that supply basically so in that context in 2012 when there was ram leela maidan incident protests were there baba ramdev was also in this protest so the home secretary had cleared these protests at his order and then the court had said that look right to protest is a fundamental right there can be no violation of it so this was the stand by the government but then what happened suddenly there was this another case which came up mazdoor kisan shakti sangathan versus union of india 2018 this is a farmers body so this was related to a farmers protest so here the court took a different stand they took a balanced stand here that look there is requirement of balancing the interest of the protesters as well as the local people also the local people should not be witnessing any kind of problems here any violation of their fundamental rights because they have the fundamental right of right to life they have the fundamental right of transit article you know freedom freedom of movement they have the fundamental right they they also can express themselves so this cannot be violated and until and unless this is not violated the protesters can easily protest and further development to it was shahin bagh protest people shahin bagh are you aware no yes yes arushi right 
so article right to strike is not a fundamental right and you can you can restrict right to protest also as per restrictions of article 19 clause 2 as we have seen here as we have seen the grounds and this was stated this was also recognized that there are restrictions to fundamental rights even right to protest under mkss and then finally under shaheen bagh case in 2019 shaheen bagh protest anyone aware related to which related to which law was the shaheen bagh protest happening people which law was related to the shaheen bagh protest as per your opinion you can just tell it so now in this what was happening women were sitting national you know highways were being blocked people's movement was being blocked and at that point of time the court had finally ordered to clear these protests that look people also have the right of public places of being able to enjoy public places yes arushi right citizenship amendment act so against the bringing up of citizenship amendment act we had shaheen bagh protest where the government where the judiciary had further balanced the right to protest overall so anyway right to strike or right to band is different than right to protest that is not a fundamental right because if you conduct a strike in a factory then you are not just restricting your right to own livelihood but you are also saying to your fellow workers that let us go to strike a strike or a band happens together so you are also somehow restricting the right to livelihood of other people this was observed in multiple unions which used to do such activities so that is why we are having such type of provisions so this was about this news article paper i hope you are able to understand moreover we should not further try to restrict movement or restrict the you know supply of essential commodities because this is our fundamental duty also that we do not damage the public property and we act as responsible citizens this is this is how we can conclude it further next news is about supreme court look what happened there was a grave tragedy human you know railway accident which happened in odisha now this under this railway accident what happened there were these collisions of three railways three railway coaches in balasore district of odisha multiple losses slide and at that point of time it was realized that it was because of electronic failure system signals electronic signals were failed but here kavach was not installed kavach as a railway system kavach as a safety was not installed so now the supreme court has said that you supreme court has asked the government that what protective measures have been implemented about railway safety including the system of kavaj so first of all let us understand kavaj what is kavaj people anyone how will kavaj protect here acha there is this incident of railway you know the railway accident suppose there are these railways now how how could the railway safety be jeopardized there can be accident now what could be other safety problems here coming in railways there might be a person being killed by railway trying to cross the railway line there might be you know tracks tracks the the derailment of railways from the tracks it can go to another track this can happen you know multiple types of tragedies so in this just tell me if there is a collision here now to avoid it we should have an automatic braking system we should have an automatic train protection system where there is automatic braking have you heard of fast tag have you utilized fast tag for payment into tolls of gateways people highways we use infrared technology there in both these trains they they'll release infrared waves and before because of that even if the driver is not aware even if the driver is not driving consciously the train these infrared will be able to detect that look there is a train ahead i have to put a brake on this train so there is automatic braking and as per that when there will be something in front of the train because there is use of infrared so automatically there will be sos emergency messages which will be released here to people and we, there is provision of constant live monitoring of this system of collision of trains and this is how this system works people the really yes 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 right so this is there and this is the most advanced as well as uh, an affordable system of railway safety for india and this is why this is one of the systems of railways safety which we are implementing 
Now, apart from that, what did the government do? What are the other safety measures? Look for having such safety measures. This will not come without funds, right? This will need a fund. Automatic braking system, infrared, all of this needs funds. So for funds, there was announcement in the budget some years back. This, there will be this rail, rail, you know, Rashtriya Rail Sanraksha Kosh. There is this maintenance of a fund because railways often lacks funds. Profitability is less. So there will be this fund here for funding of the infrastructure related to railways. Are we able to understand people? Achha, what do you mean by railway crossings or unmanned railway crossings, people? Unmanned level crossings. So, so, so just tell me, uh, have, we, have we eliminated all the unmanned level crossings in India? So this is this is another one because of which safety can be in, in, impacted that someone coming in front of the train, they can get killed. So if there is a crossing here, railway crossing, this is a track and this is a road. So there is a railway crossing here. This is unmanned. So all such type of unmanned level crossings have been eliminated so that railway accidents do not happen by, you know, by just carelessness. They have been made manned. There, are, there have been established some gates here. You might have seen this in small towns and, and, and generally in manned level crossings. So this happens, there are gates here, which can be put in this direction to prevent this, someone going into the track. There is, there is someone installed here as a guard. Now what we are doing, we are further changing it to, we are further changing it to development of underpasses or overpasses. If someone is in hurry, they can go beneath from below this track or above this track, either through underpass or through overpass. This is what we are doing in terms of railway safety. Now, in this, there are multiple issues you can mention in your exam and answers, people. First is technology. Even in Balasur incident, we observe that electronic signaling as a system has failed. So, technology is not completely holy. This can also fail sometimes. There is issue of funding. When the operating cost of ratios, operating ratio of the railways is not improving people. Then there are other issues like population density is so much, the burden on tracks is so much that the, the automatically the speed of trains and derailment of trains, all of that gets impacted. So this is about this article related to railway safety people. I hope you find it useful. You can further mention in the comment boxes if you want to ask something. I would now, uh, after this article, we would just wrap up our today's discussion. This is about a tsunami in Japan. This has been developing from yesterday. And as I had promised yesterday, so we are discussing it today. So this is about tsunami. What has happened? Look, there are there is this, this is this look, this is a Pacific Ring of Fire. A question has been asked in UPSC mains also related to Pacific Ring of Fire. What has happened here? They, this Pacific Ocean plate, this constantly goes under the Atlantic as well as the Eurasian plate. So what is happening? There is this interaction here. One plate going under the other. You might have read in your tectonic plate interactions. Can we include lack of attention drivers? Yes, Arushi, this is also one of the points that drivers lack attention. Uh, and in that regard, we should have proper training of the personnel related to railways management. So this is also one of the points we can mention. Good point. Well thought of. So now what happens? Plate interactions. This leads to earthquakes. In fact, in UPSC maze, this was asked why most of the earthquakes and volcanoes happened around this ring of fire, Pacific ring of fire. So now what it leads to? If it is underwater, if this is underwater, then as your NCRT books also mention, this leads to some displacement of water here. And then there is further release of water by shock. So there are waves generated here on the surface like this. And when these waves are generated on the surface like this, what happens is that there is this wavelength which is generated. Now, when this reaches the shores, suddenly, because there's a barrier here and these are high energy waves, high wavelength, they look like very calm in the ocean no impact on the ships in the ocean but when it reaches the shores it suddenly is pushed and when it is suddenly pushed there is high energy here 
and because of that it impacts the overall shores also so this is about tsunami this is also called as harbor wave because it's a japanese name japan witnesses a lot of tsunamis so it is also called as a harbor wave regarding because already time has passed students so and i'm not able to now uh, look at the comments here in the live section the unfortunately uh, the laptop has also discharged so what i'll do is that i'll discuss rest of it like india's efforts towards tsunami this entire portion i'll take it tomorrow so that there is no loss vis a vis our studies people so this is there and we can discuss it tomorrow and thank you people for again coming into this initiative and for joining it wholeheartedly and we'll further you know all the articles of today are complete we'll further discuss the articles tomorrow keep preparing and keep on just revising these how you can utilize all these news in your answers i'll further put up a pdf for your reference here you know so thank you so much people and just sign it off